Hey everybody, it's Laura. Just wanted to show you some tips for a posture that we do in the hot power fusion sequence and the traditional hot yoga sequence, standing forehead to knee. Uh, standing forehead to knee uh, in the Sanskrit is Dandiyamana uh, Janyushir Sasa. Took me a second. Um, yeah, so, so standing um, forehead to knee pose is the translation of that. And uh, standing forehead to knee is a pose that I've spent a lot of time working on because I really struggle with it. it. It's probably my least favorite pose of the whole sequence, and I know a lot of other people struggle with it too, so I dedicated myself earlier this year to really, really working on this pose. I mean, I always worked on it, but I, I was like, my New Year's resolution is I'm, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this pose and see if I can make some progress. Now, of course, we know, just to put things in perspective, that yoga is not about doing postures perfectly. We're not here to be perfect. We don't know what perfection really is. I mean, we wanna do the posture safely, and for maximum benefit, but the posture is going to look different in every person's body. So don't worry if your posture doesn't look perfect, like you've seen it maybe on Instagram or something like that. But we do want to get the most benefits out of the pose. And I found like I, I was having some trouble getting deep to the pose. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you stand on your, your uh, standing leg, press into your big toe, pinky toe, so you get that nice rooted firmness in your standing leg. And then you're going to take your uh, the leg that's going to kick out put the forehead to knee part, bring your knee in line with your hip. So if you want to see it from the side, it looks like this. You make a right angle bend, and same thing with your foot. Okay, so when you come into this part of the pose, the first thing that you want to do is pull your belly in as much as possible. What a lot of people do is they just right away round down, they get the grip, my arms are, are really short. Not an excuse not to do the pose, mind you, but, but this always made it hard for me to get my grip and get my thumbs underneath as well. And then I would just go for my grip and then I would try to kick out and I would get to about here and be like, oh, I'm stuck, I can't do it. So, uh, but I learned that one of the things that I was doing to my disadvantage was I was just rounding down and grabbing. I didn't start the prep for the pose by pulling my belly in. So this is a belly compression pose, so you gotta start that first. Pull my belly in, pull my belly in, pull my belly in. Super, super tight, super, super tight before I even round down. It's almost like I'm trying to pull my belly through my low spine. Belly in, belly in, belly in, then I start to round. Then I start to round. So now I'm already like my belly is as in as it can, can be. And then one more inhale. And then on my exhale, I'll start to kick out. I want to stay straight on my standing leg. And see, I got a lot more progress here. I still have a little bend in my knee. But then I can bend my elbows down and bring my forehead to my knee. I'm still working on it, but that, what you just saw, is so much more progress than I had in like the past eight years of doing the pose. Another thing you can do to try to get into this pose is to do it on your back. Because if you think about it, this pose, um, you, a lot of it is about back strength and balancing. So if we take the concern about low back strength and balancing out of the equation, we can focus on the mechanics of the pose. Let me show you what I mean. So you lay down on your back, come on your back, and then you bend your knee just like you're standing, right? Straight spine, standing. Round your spine, grab your foot, just like you do when you're standing, right? Inhale. And then exhale, kick your leg in, get your forehead to your knee, flex my standing toes, notice how my standing toes are flexed, get my forehead to my knee, and then I'm feeling more of the abdominal strength that I'm gonna need in this pose. So you can always practice it that way too. And then of course, another way to prep for the pose is to do seated forehead to knee, which is just janyushirsasana, no dandiyamada, because it's seated forehead to knee. I'll do this like so you can see. Um, so what I wanna do is extend my leg out. Now, granted, this is at a slight angle, but it's not this wide thing that sometimes we see students do in class, um, like it's, it's a split. It's not a split. Your leg is only slightly out to an angle, but it's still connected to your hip. It's not about working the inner thigh muscles. That's not what this pose is about. So you bring your sole of your opposite foot inside, and then when you reach up, again, pull your belly in, pull your belly in, really, really tight, tight, tight belly, and then exhale, come down, grab your foot, all 10 fingers, thumbs include, or however many fingers you have, but those thumbs have to go under as well. And slight bend in your knee, round your spine, forehead to knee. And that's another way you can prep for the pose. So by doing it on your back and the seated version, it will help you feel more successful in the standing version. And remember that if you do the standing version and you never get your forehead to your knee, 
that's okay. You're still getting benefits. You're getting benefits from the balance. You're getting benefits from the belly compression. You're getting benefits from extending your leg out, the kicking leg. So, you know, it's win-win all around, no matter what. But I hope these tips help you. Just remember, focus on that uh, belly compression, that, that bandha, Uriana Banda, and that's something you can use in so many poses. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on the mat.